Here we go, Bobby Maximus Live. I had to smile for the camera for like this beautiful cover photo or whatever. There's a little lag on this thing. Anyway, I am about to train. I am about to get some. I'm here for my regularly scheduled live. I go live almost every afternoon for my second workout of the day. So today, we're going to do a savage cardio and leg workout. We're going to hit some abs as well. And we're going to do a little Q&A. So stick around. You'll find out what that workout is. And if you have questions about fitness, if you need real answers about fitness, not some scam, not some person trying to sell you three easy payments in $9.99 or a person trying to sell you some nonsense. If you need real answers concerning your fitness, I've got you. I live in the real world. I got three kids. I'm 45 years old. I've never used a drug in my life. I am 100% your guy when it comes to fitness, and I can give you real answers. You might not like the answers I give, but I will give you real answers, all right? So a couple of housekeeping things before we get down to business. Number one, number one, supers, get them in. Supers help me to go live more, to give you the advice and the help that you really want. That's number one. Number two, subscribe. Number three, turn your notifications on. Number four, ask questions. The more questions you ask, the more people learn all over the world. So get on those questions. On that note, Tony Slaughter is a four-hour workout too long. I mean, I think it really depends on who you are. Like, if you're Michael Phelps, no. If you're Mo Farah, no. Now, these are two of the greatest Olympic athletes of all time. If you're a high-level MMA fighter, Leon Edwards just, uh, 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 I want to say, you know, won the belt, but he, he defended the title against Kobe Covington. No, a four-hour workout is not too long. If you're an average person, it might be. But I'll say as a blanket rule of thumb, the human being can tolerate way more work than we've been led to believe. So let's let's go with that. Now, um, you can probably handle a four-hour workout. The question is, do you need to? Like, could you get everything done in an hour or two hours? That's a real question. There are more efficient ways to do things. Um, so that, that you know, you got to take that into account. But working out's not just all about the time you spend working out. Intensity plays a role as well. So those things mix together. Uh, Oh, Pat Flux, I just wanted to say hello because I got to my jiu-jitsu practice. Well, hello. You know I love jiu-jitsu. I uh, just came third at the world's uh, black belt level uh, for Nogi Championships. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. But I love my jiu-jitsu community. Now, time for my workout. It's going to be 20 minutes today. 30 seconds of work on the ski erg. 90 seconds of rest. In the 90 seconds of rest, I am on day two of 30 straight days of Nordic curls. So I'm going to do some Nordic curls. I'm going to do some abs. Uh, a lot of times with these interval workouts, like this is one of the ways I'm maintaining an elite level of cardiovascular fitness. Is every afternoon I do these 30 second work, 90 second rest intervals. And they really, really work. I do between 10 and 15 rounds. Yesterday, I actually did 15. Warrior Wisdom, thank you for stopping by. Hello, thank you for commenting. Um, but yesterday I did 15 rounds. Today I'm probably going to do 10. It's going to be a 20-minute workout. Uh, and in between each round of 30 seconds on the skier, I'm going to do 90 seconds of additional work. I'm going to do some Nordic curls. They are an absolutely savage leg-driven exercise, the hardest hamstring exercise known to man. Uh, I mean, everyone can do hamstring curls. Everyone can do standing hamstring curls. Everyone can do RDLs. Not everyone can do Nordic curls. So I'm going to do some of those. And, and if you were playing along at home, you can't do Nordic curls. That's okay. You can do 30 seconds of work and cardio. You can do 90 seconds of, of, of sit-ups. You can do squats. You can do lunges. Like, you have choices, all right? Now, uh, in terms of the skier, I have to hit a minimum pace on that. I'm going to hit a sub 140 for 500 meter pace. It's the equivalent of 150 meters in 30 seconds. A lot of times people ask, do I have, uh, I don't have a skier. I don't have a rower. What type of cardio can I do? If you don't have those things, you can also feel free to do bodyweight stuff. So you can do jumping jacks. You can run. 
You can do burpees. I'd recommend about 10 burpees in 30 seconds if that's the case. And so get your 30 seconds of cardio in, and then we get the 90 seconds of rest. And in the 90 seconds of rest, you got to move. you got to do some body weight driven movement. Uh, someone just asked, and we're going to do 10 rounds of that, like I said. Someone just asked, do I work with the TRX? I don't use a TRX, but they can be incredible tools. Uh, there's actually a trainer in San Francisco I know named Louisa who who's, makes use of the TRX. She gets incredible results with the clients. Uh, incredible trainer. She's one of the, some of the biggest companies in the world. Um, but the TRX can be really, really valuable uh, if you use it right. And, and I, I think that way about a lot of exercise you know, equipment, right? People get hung up on kettlebells, dumbbells, bench, all that kind of stuff. But really, anything can work if you do it right. Tony Slaughter, you got a lot of good questions today. I appreciate you. Do you stretch before and after a workout? I rarely stretch. Now, it doesn't mean I don't believe in it, but you've got to understand I do jiu-jitsu almost every day. I stretch plenty during my jiu-jitsu workout. So I don't really value, in terms of like my strength conditioning stuff, the, the stretching and, and even mobility uh, components of a well-rounded fitness program. That said, I am doing jiu-jitsu. I am getting my stretching and mobility in it. So if you don't do something like jiu-jitsu, you probably should, probably should engage in some stretching or some mobility. And that's, and that's something that people miss, right? They're like, oh, all you do is weights and cardio. Well, no, I do other stuff. You just don't see it because you don't equate jujitsu with that. So, uh, yeah, away we go. Is Jack so? Yeah. He's a, he was a king, so. Good job. Okay, just uh, communicated with my wife. Just came in. It's our actually our son's fourth birthday today, so she got a cake for him. We're going to have a little party tonight. I won't eat cake, but I'm going to eat all the burgers. We're making burgers for dinner, so get that meat in. All right, uh, let me see. Tony Slider says Superfoot Wallace did before and afterwards. Great. Superfoot Wallace is a great athlete. Um, works for him. What I do, you know, I, I, I kind of find works for me. Um, and, you know, like that's an important part of fitness before I get on to the workout. Uh, an important part of fitness that's really, really underrated is, is figuring out and isolating what works for you. Like just because something works for me, there are principles to follow, right? Like intensity is important. You got to spend time if you want to get better. Uh, proper form. Like there are things that are universal truths. But everyone's different. Everyone has different needs. Everyone's body responds to different things. And so some people respond better to certain types of training. You should know what works for you. Here's the reality. Like I could try to sit here and criticize everyone's workout program, but if you look good and you feel good, and it's working for you, I mean, all the power to you. All right, so I'm about to get my workout in. I'll continue to come back and answer your questions, but here's the deal. Get your supers in. If you're going to ask questions, give me supers. It helps me go live longer. It helps me go live more. Number two, subscribe. Number three, turn your notifications on so you get notified for next time. And get your questions in. I'm going to go set up my skier now. Again, to recap, 30 seconds of work, 90 seconds of rest. We're going to do 10 rounds, and in the 90 seconds of rest, we're going to do some bodyweight stuff. I'm on a Nordic curl kick, so I'm going to do some Nordic curls and some abs. But if you were doing this at home, you could certainly do some squats, some lunges, some things like that. So let's get started, all right? We're going to set this up. And, and right now, to be honest with you, I just finished uh, competing at Worlds, so I'm doing a bit of what I call cardiovascular paddling. I'm not overly crushing myself. I am just maintaining uh, cardiovascular fitness that I have built up. Again, not looking to crush myself. Uh, and I do this every day. And it might not seem a lot when you do 10 rounds, but you do 10 rounds a day, every day by the end of the week. Like that's 70 intervals. It's a lot. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to do my 30 second interval. And then I'll jump on this and I'll continue talking to you. And away we go. So let's get started.
round one is done. Tony says, I have to get going, sir. Have a good day. Enjoy the birthday. I'll finish watching tomorrow. Thank you very much. Before you go, get that super in. You asked a lot of questions. Get that super in. You can do it before you leave. Easy to do. All right, so I've got my 30 seconds working. I'm on the skier. Now, 90 seconds of rest. But 90 seconds of rest is not really 90 seconds of rest. We're going to do some Nordic curls. Uh, it's my first set. So I'm going to start with some negatives and just pop myself back up. If you can't do these legitimately, like I mean, lower yourself slowly to get back up, negatives are a great way to start to learn. So I'll do five of them. Go. Woo. Just a few negatives. Interval one is done. 30 seconds on the skier, 90 seconds of rest with some Nordic curls in between. At five seconds left for the second interval. Second interval is in the books. Remember, we are doing a Q&A, so get your questions in. All right, the workout today. 30 seconds of work on the skier, the cardiovascular driven movement. If you don't have a skier, that's okay. You can use a rower, a treadmill, an elliptical. You do box jumps. In that case, I just aim for about 20 box jumps in 30 seconds. Burpees, 10 burpees in 30 seconds will do it. We're doing 10 rounds of that. In the 90 seconds of rest, you've got to do some body weight driven exercise. Today, I'm doing Nordic curls. And again, I'm doing negatives. It's a huge amount of volume. Good. I'm going to actually have 30 days of Nordic curls program. Get some really strong hamstrings. Ooh. One more. There we go. All right, but if you don't have an order curl bench or you can't do order curls, feel free to do squats, lunges, sit ups, some other body weight exercise. Interval number three. Oh, looks like we have another comment. Ivan Alvarez, what training did you do in the morning? Great question. So they do train twice a day. So this morning was actually upper body strength. Start with a little body weight circuit. 50 pull-ups, 50 dips, 50 push-ups. Then I moved into some incline barbell press. Did 21s. So you do 7 reps, lower half. 7 reps, upper half. 7 full reps. I did 10 sets of that at between 135 and 225. In between each set, I did five axle bar pull-ups. And then I did three sets of knees to elbows, some stuff for some core work, and then I was up to all upper body conditioning. After that, we went to jiu-jitsu. Ooh, 
three. One more. Good, just shooting those negatives from the Nordics. All right, so I got another rate of block, and then I want to address something. I want to address why I'm doing the same interval workout night after night after night after night. Let's get this interval. question I get is, why are you doing the same interval workout night after night after night? First of all, just as a blanket rule, if you want to get good at something, do it every day. You look at world class swimmers, I mean even collegiate swimmers who are swimming 40,000 yards a day. Like they are getting that work in rowers row, hours and hours a day. If you want to be good at basketball, you got to shoot a lot of shots, right? So, I really believe that. Now, that's a blanket rule of thumb. Hell, you want to be a good electrician or plumber, do it every day. Now, second thing is, I believe in all training, check my time, needs to be goal driven. So, I can criticize your workout program. I can tell you a million different ways to do something, but the real question is, is it helping you achieve your goals? So my three major goals. One, to be able to compete at a really high level in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I got my interval to go, so hold that thought. One, I want to compete at a really high level in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That is important to me. Number two, I want to look good. I'm not going to lie, looking good can look good. It's health all the time. I wrote a book I can take for my body. And then three, I want to be injury free. Like I'm 45 years old. And just beyond the point in my life where I want to have bad knees, bad shoulders, bad hips. Like, I want to not only look good, but I want to feel really good. So, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a really important part of competing, especially at a high level, having high level cardiovascular fitness. So, when you look at the skier, the skier helps me develop that. And if you notice the stance that I'm in, during my skier, it would be very similar to a standing stance in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or grappling. So, it's functional for Jiu Jitsu. Number two, helps me look good. Doing more cardiovascular work will help you burn more calories, will help me build a bigger engine so I can go harder, which is important. Let's get into that. So 
one helps me build a bigger engine? Which one turn make me stronger? The higher level cardiovascular fitness I have, the more my creatine systems will charge, the more work I can do in the gym. Number three, compared to running, it's relatively low impact. So I can build a high level here, I'm a little out of breath, of cardiovascular fitness without wear and tear on the ankles and these running causes. So I think it's a great thing. All right, more questions here. Suave Dave, Suave Duav, what tips for bulking? Okay, so if you wanna bulk, a couple things. Number one, I don't think you have to get too fat for that. DEXA scan is the gold standard. Now, for the DEXA, I wouldn't want to go above personally 15 to 16% body fat. Optimal level for hormones, and you don't need to get any fatter than that to put on muscle. Now, there is some truth to carrying a little bit more body fat, you'll have an easier time putting on muscle. But, let me finish that thought in a second. Thing I was going to say with the body fat was that when it comes to bulking is that if you're under like 10% on a DEXA, let me actually talk about DEXA first. DEXA is the only standard I trust or a high, like the hydro dunk tanks. Those in body scans, the little electricity scales, they don't work. They don't count. They probably say you're way leaner than you are. But on a DEXA, if you're under 10, you probably inhibits hormone function. You're probably too lean to put on some serious muscle, unless you're on drugs or something natural. So what I would say is, you don't want to get too crazy lean, but you don't want to go to the other lane and just put on a bunch of fat that you don't eat. So that's the first thing on bulking. Number two, the easiest way to ensure you're putting on enough muscle is to eat a gram of protein per pound of body weight daily. And then number three, make sure you do plenty of hypertrophy work in the gym. Four sets of 15, five sets of 20, 10 sets of 10, stuff like that. I like compound athletic movements. I like the bench press. I like squats. I like lunges. Bulgarian split squats are a great one. Stick with big movements. So those would be the three tips I would give you. All right. So we've had a lot of questions. Ivan, Suave, David, you asked what device I'm on. It's called the Ski Erg. Ivan, what are your days of training? Uh, what days of training do I consider to be easy and difficult? I'll answer that in a minute. But guys, if you're going to ask all these questions, get your supers in. Even if it's like a buck. Right? Like supers are how... I can keep doing this thing over and over and over again. And the more supers I get, the more motivated I am to a lot. And I know for this kind of knowledge, you can afford something. So, in terms of hard days and easy days of training, uh, generally, my hardest days of the week are Monday, Tuesday. 
because I kind of start the week well rested, I generally don't do jujitsu on Sunday. It's not always true. But generally, Sunday's a day off. So I don't go into the workout beat up. So Monday and Tuesday generally are hard days. Wednesday, not easy, but a little bit down in intensity. And then I'll go hard again Thursday, Friday. Those are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are generally my hardest days, although not switches. Times I go by feel. So I'm a really big believer in this, Ivan. Train by feel. If you feel really good, go hard. If you don't feel good, go easy. And I think that's a really good way. Beginners can't really do that. Beginners, you just got to show up day after day after day and build the volume. But once you're fit, intensity becomes important. So if days you feel really good, show up and go hard. Days you don't, take it easy. And so, even though I plan for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday to be my harder days, man, I'll tell you, some days, like I wake up on Wednesday, even after a hard day Monday, Tuesday, and I feel great, I feel amazing. So, I crush it on Wednesday, go really hard. And then, maybe on Thursday, I wake up, I feel great again. Like, I shouldn't after three days hard, but I just do. So I go hard again. And then Friday, if I'm tired, I rest a little bit. And just like you see me doing today, doing these Nordic curls, hamstring stuff. Oh, Miguel da Silva, thank you. Coming through with the super. I appreciate you. Appreciate all your hard work, too, by the way. Great role model for kids. As I was saying, Miguel, any questions you got, I got you, by the way. But, um, yeah, days I feel good, I go hard. Days I don't feel good, I go easy. And I think judging according to your body is a great way to go. Miguel, here to say hello. Two weeks in a master's body, loving it. I do just carbs because I went too low carb too quickly. Love the two by five deadlifts versus sprints. Yeah, five, six, two deadlifts with the sprints are awesome. Question for you. You gave me a super so you get some personalized attention, right? How many carbs was too low? And how many calories were you eating overall? And what type of carbs were they? Because I might be able to help you tweak some stuff, okay? So answer those questions and then uh, give you a little bit of personalized advice. You know what I mean? One. Just doing these slow and controlled, pop myself back up. 30 days of these, going to blow them right out. After I'm done all this, I'll actually do a couple of hard sets. There we go. Intervals are down. There's 10 intervals, 20 minute workout. 10 intervals isn't that bad. But like I said, the volume, it really starts to add up. You know, um, if I'm doing that kind of volume every day, by the end of the week, I've got a lot of intervals and I've got a good base cardiovascular fitness, especially when you look over six weeks, two months, three months, stuff like that. 
All right. Miguel, get me the answer to my question, and I will uh, answer it for you. Of course, you can also, because I prioritize people to give me supers, you could also slide me DMs and uh, give me that information, and uh, I'd be happy to answer it. Okay, so too many oats, quinoa, fresh bakery bread, fruit and white potatoes. Okay, so I get rid of the bread. Get rid of the bread completely. It's manufactured, all right? I'm okay with the oats. I'm okay with the quinoa. I'm okay with the fresh fruit. I'm okay with the white potatoes. Here's the deal with carbohydrates. If you are going low and you're, you're looking at somebody that's, I mean, I'm 238 pounds, 240 pounds, and I'm eating maybe 100 to 150 grams a day. If you just suck it up for three weeks, you will get used to it, okay? So give yourself a three-week runway to get feeling good off that. Your body will make the adjustment, and I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off. In the meantime, if you eat more protein, more fat, and a little more salt and water, it will help you a lot. So I'd like to see you really like, probably for now, under, let's call it 150 to 175 grams of carbs a day. Make sure that your carbs are from oatmeal, white rice, potato, and then berries. Berries are the best form of fresh fruit, the most nutrient dense. And then the rest of your diet should be like ribeye steak, lean ground beef, uh, chicken's good, sashimi is good, um, avocados are great, salt and olive oil, some arugula, or as, as my French friends call it, raquette. Um, that, you know, it's pretty much like a, like a diet that I'm on. And if you're having like, call it 50 grams or 40 grams of carbs uh, of oatmeal for breakfast, and, and you're doing like 30 grams of carbs from rice at lunch, and then uh, you're doing, um, you know, 30 grams of potatoes at dinner, you shouldn't eat more carbs than that. It's literally, you just got to get used to it after, after like three weeks. So um, that's what I would want to see, like 150 to 175 max. Uh, I would actually cut my carbs max 30 per meal. 30 grams of carbs per meal, and then and then you should be fine. Like, you shouldn't have any issue with that at all. And then get rid of that bread, all right? Ivan, if you need any more advice, by the way, slide in the DMs. I'm doing one of your muscle mass uh, gain programs. How many times a week do you recommend doing these uh, intervals? Uh, what do you do? I'm doing intervals like five, six days a week, but remember, I'm trying to compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If I was doing one of my muscle mass programs, uh, which I have for free on my website, by the way, bobbymaximus.com, I, uh, I would be doing it like twice a week just for base maintenance because at some point you're going to have to breathe again and breathing is important for health. So twice a week you could do these. Uh, yeah, so Miguel, again, if you have any questions, please ask. But 150 to 175 grams a day, max, uh, max 30 a meal. And, and no bread, no pasta. Like, like you got to be able to pluck it from the ground and eat it. Like, even rice. I don't eat a lot of rice. I'd much prefer a potato or a sweet potato. So just something to consider. All right. That looks like the end of our life. Uh, Miguel, really appreciate the super. You guys, listen. Uh, Miguel will tell you. Uh, you give supers. You get personalized attention. So get them in. Subscribe. Notifications. One more question for Miguel. Carbs before training or early uh, in, the, in, the, in the day is better. It doesn't really matter. Like I could tell you to eat them before training, eat them after training to fill up your muscle glycogen, uh, eat them in the morning, eat them at night. Like, like at the end of the day, it has more to do, unless you're like a high-end specialized athlete, it has more to do with your consumption over 24 hours, right? So you do what's convenient. Like you, you, you'll be fine. Um, whatever is convenient will work just fine. So if you like oatmeal for breakfast, that's fine. If you really like potatoes before bed, that's fine. A lot of times uh, I'll recommend to people trying to get lean not to eat carbs at night, but it's not that somehow your carbs don't absorb at night or it makes you fatter. It's more a behavioral modification thing because if people are gonna cheat, they cheat at night and they cheat with really, really bad carby stuff. More of a psychological thing, but it honestly doesn't really matter when you get your intake according to the science, if you will. So, great live today. Thank you everybody. Um, grateful for you all and uh we will check in later tomorrow again same bat time same bat channel you know the drill